Good day, folks. Mabuhay from the Philippines and hola to everyone in Spain and around the world. I am Angela Lorenzo, a Filipino writer and an incoming auxiliar de conversación or language and culture assistant bound for Spain in the school year 2022 to 2023. This is the Ox Talks, Conversations with Language and Culture Assistants in Spain. The Language and Culture Assistance Program is a program of Spain's Ministry of Education where they invite people from different countries in the world to assist Spanish educators in guiding their brilliant students for the mastery and appreciation of the English language. As a first-time auxiliar, I thought of coming up with a show that can be used as an informational resource for people who are interested to take part in the program. What better way to learn about the program than to hear from the people who have actually experienced it themselves. Today, we welcome Pete Laput, a language assistant assigned in Madrid. So, good day, Pete. And I think it's it's already afternoon there. I mean, no, it's, it's not morning. actually. It's, yeah, it just turned 10 a.m. Oh, that's it, amazing. Uh, Spain is, yeah. So, buenos dias. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, good morning. Uh, how are you? And and thank you so much for accepting my invitation to be on the show and to share your experiences with our viewers. Of course, it's no problem. You know, anytime um, we can talk about the program and sort of talk about its ups and downs, I'm, right. it's always welcome. <laughs> yeah, um, everything uh, based on your experience would be uh, much appreciated. So um, the first question, Pete, would be, what were you doing before uh, you participated in the program? And what was your career like? Actually, this is a funny thing because um, I never studied Spanish in school. My uh, I studied European languages in the University of the Philippines, but my major was German. So you can imagine, you know, a German teacher sort of going into the program um, without even knowing any Spanish coming here to Spain. Um, so yeah, before the program, I was unemployed. Germ- well, I still am now. It's just that um, operations have moved online. But yeah, so I was a full-time German teacher as well as a graduating student. And yeah, um, making the shift was a little daunting at first, but you know, always open for new experiences. That's that's a uh, that's amazing because at least you already have background um in teaching a language that originated in in Europe as well. So um a follow up question to that Pete would be how different is the German language from the Spanish language and also um what are the, their similarities as well? Well, actually, you know, looking at the language families themselves, the origins they come from very they come from very different sides of the Indo-European family, where German is actually closer to English than it is to Spanish. Even though English is also pretty close to Spanish because of historical reasons, um, it did help though that I already knew how to learn a language, so to say. Mm-hmm. It did help that um, I had some linguistic background so it's easier to spot patterns it's easier to um to see things that okay so they say it like this I'm gonna say it like this as well uh yeah so I guess if anything that's what my background in German helped with that's amazing and also you already have a very extensive and brilliant background in teaching as well. So I think that this program is really meant for you. Um, so uh, how did you hear about the program while, while you were also um, stud- uh, pursuing studies in, in UP and also te- uh, being an educator? Um, so how did you hear about the program and what made you decide and interested to participate in it? Well, this was actually just the shot in the dark because um, the University of the Philippines, UP is a partner a university of the ministry because well of the european languages curriculum um so that's really how i heard about it a lot of my other friends have already come to spain um some are still in spain some have already gone back to the philippines um but yeah basically that's how i heard about it i've always kind of known about the program it's always seemed out of reach though it's just during the pandemic that um me and my other German speaking friends, my other friends from my degree program were like, you know what? What if we try? So we tried. And somehow, by some stroke of luck, we got in. 
and now we're all here. So that's yeah, um, that's how I got to know about the program. That's how I applied through the program. And yeah, it's been great so far. That's amazing. And yeah, if there's one lesson that we can learn here is always and don't self-reject and always try for something new because you never know um, what life has in store for you. So that's amazing, Pete. And I admire your courage for that. So the, the next question, Pete, would be, um, how is your experience so far with the program? Um, like you mentioned earlier about like, uh, like you uh, were able to go there with your friends and you were mm-hmm. able to hear about it with, uh, from your friends as well. Um, what's it like uh, being a language assistant, um, being connected and affiliated with schools and Spain uh, and being able to teach uh, the English language uh, compared to uh, teaching the German language while you were in the Philippines? Well, um, just to start with a comparison, it's already very different because here I'm teaching children. I teach, yeah. uh, last year I taught children from five to seven years old. And in the Philippines, I taught people way above my age because I was teaching nurses who wanted to move to Germany. So from that, it was already very different and it was already very um, scary going into it. I'm not necessarily a kid's person, or at least I thought I wasn't. So that's kind of what contributed to the scare factor. But coming here, it's been very pleasant. It's been very nice. Um, I really love working with the teachers and the kids in my school. My school is kind of far from the center of Madrid. It's, let's say, an hour, around an hour, more or less, by bus and by train. But you know, it's been great. I love the place. It's right up in the mountains. It's amazing. Uh, one time we got snow. That was fun. Um, and regarding the thing you mentioned about the friends, yeah, that's definitely a big factor. Just already <laughs> having friends here. Um, but also, you know, ha- having the opportunity to make new friends and sort of just letting yourself go out of your comfort zone and try new things with new people it's been really great so yeah that's so inspiring uh pete and yeah basically it's it's a whole new different experience and it's also something that is worthwhile i believe so um what are some of the activities that uh you conducted in in the classes as a language assistant because um, from what I know, like uh, in, in just uh, basing on ma- the initial program, uh, initial information of the program uh, on their web- on their website, uh, you will be uh, assisting educate Spanish educators in in uh, helping reinforce the students or the the pupils since they are still children um, in appreciating and mastering the the English language. Um, what were some of the uh, key activity or specific activities that you uh, did, and also what were some of those memorable ones? Sorry, I was muted. So some of the things that I did in school was really, well, basically, our main job there is to help them speak English, right? So that's like one of the main things I did was to take them outside, practice the English language with them. So for these kids, it was like, oh, how are you? Um, Do you have any brothers? Do you have pets? Just basic conversation things. That's amazing. The, yeah, and for the little kids, because um, first grade is around six years old, and I mentioned that I was teaching children from five to seven. So from the five years old, the infantile courses, it's really just like help the Eng- or help the teacher, the kindergarten teacher. Well, it's basically kindergarten. Um, handle the class, give activities in English, play games, watch videos. Um, and help with activities that are already in their curriculum. So yeah, the infantile part was really fun, but I really got to be a teacher, so to speak, for the first grade and second grade, because there I also gave them presentations about um, sounds. So basically, I made phonics presentations about letters. So this is how you pronounce this letter. These are some words that have this letter. And that's so mm-hmm. now let's practice, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, that those are some of the things that I did. That's incredible, Pete. So I'm just curious, Pete, because um there are different kinds of 
English, and I think that as a linguist, you know this because there is mm -hmm. um, Australian English. There's, uh, I think the most popular one is American English, and there's also British mm -hmm. English. So, what kind of English is uh, Spain most fun to learn about? And um, is it like the British English, and since, since it's closest, um, UK is closer to Spain than America, or um, like, and, and also regarding the the pronunciation of the of the words, mm -hmm. what are the what kind of English um, do you teach? Um, American or uh, the British kind? Well, I personally think that the Auxiliaris program exists for the students in Spain to be exposed to different varieties of English. Because mm -hmm. um, as you may know, the program doesn't just accept people from the US, the UK, yeah. Australia, South Africa. They also accept people from countries that don't speak English or that's what I call countries that have to take an IELTS, like us mm -hmm. or India Philippines, or, yeah. Um, yeah, just really a lot of different countries. Mm -hmm. And that's, and it's not even just for the English, you know, because there are other languages that you can teach as an auxiliar, like the German, the French ones. I think really the goal of the program is to introduce them to different varieties. Now, yeah. regarding the English that they teach, though, mm -hmm. it's, I would say it's more geared towards British English. What I like oh, to call okay. it is European English, European, actually. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. yeah that, well, that's just me. That's just what I like <laughs> to call it. Because um, it's not necessarily British, British English, mm -hmm. but the it's sort of like English taught as a second language, but from, from the perspective of um, English publishers, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's not necessarily what I think they'd speak in England or like that area, but mm -hmm. it's what they would teach to people. And yeah. even in the way um, that the teachers teach, because some teachers studied in uh, the UK, some studied in the US, it's, but it's still a very, there's still a very distinct Europeanism to it, is what I would right. say. Um, like the pronunciation of the T's, which mm -hmm. I'm doing right now, which you wouldn't hear in American English, for example. Mm -hmm. Or, um, yeah, that's one of the examples that I can think of right now. That's amazing. So th there's definitely a different variety of them. And I think that learning the basics is just as important as mastering the language itself because it's uh, a conversational uh, way. And it also uh, connects people from all walks of life. Communication is important that way. Um, so my next question, Pete, would be, um, what is life like in the region that you've uh, chosen and, um, and, and where you're based at? And you mentioned earlier that uh, you live quite... Uh, a, a bit like far from the uh, center of Madrid, or like was oh no, that actually I live in the center. My school oh, okay, is far. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so that, your school is far. Mm. Yeah. So that's like one of the things that I really love about mm -hmm. Madrid specifically is the public transportation. Like oh wow. my god, <laughs> just as a person from the Philippines, as a person from the province, mm -hmm. um, my it's just it's amazing because everything even on the outskirts is nothing there's nothing more than two hours away from madrid everything is basically like an hour away wow. mm -hmm. um so that's really one thing that i will be having trouble parting with when i leave the region <laughs> but um yeah the public transportation is amazing so that's really one of the things i love what i didn't love though when i was coming here and even now, actually, is how slow the bureaucracy is. That's very valid because, you know, it's it's a big city. Uh, I think it's around 6 million inhabitants for the whole region. And that's a lot of people. So the bureaucracy is kind of slow. And when we were coming here, we got our cartas at, I think that was on September 29th. Okay. Yeah, 29th, uh, they called us the next day, September 30th, to come to the embassy on October 1st. So it was really rushed. Remember, um, October 1st is the start of the program. So like that was yeah. that was insane. That was nerve-wracking. And even now, for example, that I'm here, because mm -hmm. um, we also have to, you know, process our papers for the renewal. 
I passed my papers on the 20th of May and until now I'm still getting no response. So oh, okay. that's one of the things I really don't like here. Mm -hmm. um, culture wise, I don't know. I just really love Madrid. It's a big city. So again, as I mentioned uh, from the province, just the draw of big yeah. cities, the pull is just something that I really can't escape. And I really like the vibe of Madrid. You know how cities just give off different and I don't know maybe just me but sometimes I feel like cities give off energies there's like a feminine <laughs> energy there's a masculine energy mm -hmm. or there's just a fun energy Madrid is really just a fun energy fun city energy. and I yeah <laughs> from what I know though is that Spain is a very like festive country and I it think is. that most of us Filipinos have been we got that from them yeah, yeah. <laughs> have been influenced by their festivity. But yeah, that's definitely something uh that to enjoy about. And I'm sorry about the like bureaucratic process. And I think that um every country definitely has its ups and downs. Sure. But what the good thing is that you were able to have a good relationship with uh your co-workers, your co-teach, co-educators, and also um within the school community itself. So it's it's amazing that you were able to experience that. So um my my next question, Pete, would be, what are you looking forward to in the next school year um, since now is summertime in Madrid and Europe in general? I'm looking forward to the weather getting colder. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. No, but actually, no, not kidding because it's really hot in Madrid right now. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's a heat wave. I'm not sure. It's either oh, a heat oh, wave yeah. or it's really just normal, but mm -hmm. um, it's been hitting like 37 degrees, 37, 38 Um in the afternoon that's, that's very that's, hot mm -hmm. yeah it's insane um no but really what i'm really excited about is to get back to my kids i miss my kids mm -hmm. like a lot. <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure they're they they're learning quite a lot from you and definitely they no one really has that i mean like it's a rare opportunity for for pupils or students to have a teacher who has a background in UP in the University of the Philippines, one of the prestigious uh, universities in in our country, and that's something to be proud of. And definitely, so uh, yeah, uh, it's it's something to look forward to um, for the next school year to uh, meet your uh, uh, students again and to uh, be able to work well with your um, co educators again. So my last question, Pete, would be: What is your advice for up, uh, incoming auxiliars? Um, in general, mm -hmm. pack your isopropyl and ethyl alcohol. I'm <laughs> just kidding. No, but <laughs> like just sanitary shit, hand sanitizer, alcohol. Mm -hmm. It's kind of expensive here and kind of hard to find. So that's kind of what I miss from the Philippines. Just, mm -hmm. just as a okay. mm -hmm. light germaphobe, you know, with yeah. the threats of COVID <laughs> and monkeypox. It's always like, whoosh. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the hand sanitizer is here are mm -hmm. good but you know they're expensive um don't waste your money on unnecessary shit don't be like hmm, <laughs> i kind of need an exercise ball when i go there and mm -hmm. now you're here and you don't and you have an exercise ball and um none of the important stuff that's me by the way i did that <laughs> um sort of kind of i guess get ready the things that you sure you want to mm -hmm. bring to spain and the things that you think you can do without. Oh, okay. Pack mm -hmm. some t-shirts if you plan on staying the summer or some light clothes. You can buy the winter clothes here. Mm -hmm. Um, I have this favorite thrift store. It's called Umana. I buy everything there. Mm -hmm. You can get a lot of stuff there. Please don't waste your baggage on bringing clothes that are for the winter. Unless mm -hmm. you have some jackets or stuff that you really can't part with. Yeah. Um, <laughs> If you're a smoker, mm -hmm. buy your cigarettes from the Philippines. We are <laughs> legally allowed a maximum of 10 cajas mm -hmm. for like bringing to Spain because Spain doesn't have flavored cigarettes. So if you're a smoker, kind of, you know, yeah. get that ready. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't have um, um, hobbies to smoke or anything like that. <laughs> of course. Yeah, it's a bad hobby. Don't pick it up. But if it's a hobby that you already have, it's going to be hard. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's gonna be expensive, I bet. But yeah, yeah it is expensive. Mm, when a you have the will to survive, here. right? When you have the will to survive, you can definitely make it. <laughs> of course. And um, I don't know. I guess one of the major things that I would want to say 
is not to be afraid to make friends not to be afraid to right. put yourself out there it's really daunting um the first few months i was here i only really had my friends from up who also already had their friends so like mm, it was okay. kind of hmm. <laughs> but when i started putting myself out there when i started going to things when i started partying nah, yeah. just kidding. But like when i started sort of living my mm -hmm. life it it was really fun it was right. mm -hmm. the only thing i could say is that i wish i would have done it earlier earlier mm -hmm. yeah but yeah i think that's it i think that's all i kind of want to say yeah but thank you for that advice and it's it's definitely something um us incoming auxiliars to look forward to and learn from you guys because you've you've already been there you've already experienced um life in madrid and in spain in general and you've you've traveled really far and it's a great accomplishment having reached from the philippines to spain that's a very big accomplishment already and yeah congratulations on everything you've thank achieved you. Pete. and uh, we, yeah, we'll definitely connect once I am there and um, I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> but for our viewers, um, yeah, uh, we thank Pete for his advice, for everything that um, he has given us, for um, his insights and for his guidance um, for, for, for us to prepare <laughs> uh, for Spain. So thank you so much once again, Pete. And yeah, that's it, folks. Um, stay tuned for more episodes where we will be interviewing more auxiliars to help you prepare for this program. So thank you and have a good day. Hasta luego. Hasta luego.